Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to read this pretty entertaining email I sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy, he is 63 years old, and he shares his story how after two unhappy marriages, or marriages that ended very unhappy, he finally has had enough and he's living his life exactly the way he wants to live. You're going to see with his last marriage, he was already, it was already on the way out, it was really going bad. And he started to realize, I want to live a life outside the city, living in national parks, working there, and hopping around from national parks, and minimalist lifestyle and all that. And he does exactly that. And you're going to see how his life is, he's on cloud nine now, living his life free, doing what he wants, when he wants, and all that. And interestingly, the wife he left because she pushed him too far is routinely begging and pleading for him to come back. When he laid down the law and said, I'm out of here. So aside from the fact that he's living a, truly a life that he wants now and he loves it, away from all the madness of this world and, and enjoying what, doing what he enjoys, he also has this, uh, oh, wow, what happened to my voice? He also has this, the great satisfaction of his ex who treat him like dog crap, begging and pleading for him to come back. That would be a very good one to go over here, guys, to show you in his story. Not only should a guy, when he's been pushed too far, live the life that he wants, as long as he's not hurting people that are good to him, and it can be done, and you can make it happen if you're willing to go that route. And also, you're going to learn here about the mistakes he made, about rushing into marriages, acting weak, not laying down the law, and how women will lose respect for guys that act weak, amongst many other things here. So, although you can clearly see this is very long, I had a lot of long ones lately, it's definitely worth your time. So definitely, this is a this is what this is a good video for a long car ride or a commute to work at the gym or whatever. So load up on your beer and popcorn because this is a long one, but a good one. He says, "Hello SSM, I've been watching your channel for about a month and I enjoy your content. I can see a lot of mistakes I made in my past relationships. The story I'm about to tell is quite different from the stories you have read on your channel. Everybody says that, but let's be honest here, they actually are pretty much all the same. Let's." really think about that but you've been watching a month if you watch if you've been watching for a while you obviously recognize the similarities anyway i believe there will be a lot of people who don't agree with what i did all i can say is i followed my gut on what was best for me you will find out that i'm not the best writer and it's never been easy for me to express myself in writing no problem bro you did a pretty you did a way better job than some people uh before i get into my story a little background on me I'm 63 years old right now, you can call me Ben, and I've had two marriages. The first marriage lasted 19 years. We got married way too early at 22 years old. I know, smack smack. You're darn right about that, sir. We did not want kids until later in life. We wanted to enjoy life and work on our careers. Very sensible, except for getting married at 22. I forgot to mention my wife Betty had girl next door looks, petite with an hourglass figure, blonde and blue eyes. We had our first and only child eight years into our marriage. Okay, so you're about 30 years old. Our marriage and life were going great until the last year. That's what it is. Everything's going great until it doesn't go great. Or it hasn't been very great all along. You think it was great, but actually wasn't so great. <clears throat> In our first 18 years of marriage, we both were very affectionate and SEX at least three to four times a week. Dude, after 18 years of marriage, you were still hooking up three to four times a week? That's amazing. Really. <clears throat> we both initiated the SEX. It was very much in I was very much in love with her and she was my she was my life. Smack! And that is the problem so many guys have. Uh -uh. Should be the other way around. You and your daughters and, and children should be her life, as that's true female feminine energy, and your life should have been goals, ambitions, bringing home the bacon, all that type of thing. You can love your family, but you get my point. Uh, the last year will sound very familiar. She became distant, no SEX, secretive, working late, and so on. This went on for a couple months, and I sat her down and asked Betty, <clears throat> point blank, if she was having an affair. Of course, she denied it and said that she went to the doctor to check her hormones. Yeah, she's not going to admit it. She's not going to admit it until she's ready to admit it and she's walking out that door. At first, I bought into it since I had full trust in her. Smack! You always have to trust your gut and pay attention to red flags. And never be fully trusting of anybody, guys. It's unfortunate, but that's reality. <clears throat> but 
but nothing changed, still distant and little to no SCX. And we did have SCX, she basically laid there. At this point, I could not prove it, but I knew there was another man. I was talking with my dad, he felt that she was cheating with a married man. How many times do I say, listen to your fathers? The, the, the fathers that are actually men, not these pee-whipped fathers. Before I could sit down with her again, she asked for a divorce. There you go. You heard all the signs he said that were there, and now she's asking for a divorce. And oh, by the way, let's be honest here. They don't divorce or break up until almost always they have your replacement ready to go. So obviously she's cheating. I asked her why she wanted the divorce. This is a direct quote. I kid you not. She said to him, I've never been a non I've never been in a non-couple. I want to be a non-couple. Whatever. In the same conversation, she also told me, if you knew the real me, you would not like me. Translation, she even married to a totally different person all these years because there's who she shows you in the world is who she really is. <clears throat> and this whole I want to be a non-couple means I want to be free to do whatever I want to whoever I want. Well, she is correct on that. During the divorce, I found out she was cheating on me with the CEO who was married and had kids. There you go. This is why I tell you when guys say, oh, my story's different and blah, blah. No, it's not. These stories are all the same. This is why I think so many guys watch this just to see reality and prepare themselves. Uh, nothing like losing 19 years of your life on a lie. I was devastated for several years. My daughter was 10 years old at the time of the divorce. It was very difficult for her. In the divorce, my wife got everything. The house, my daughter, most of the retirement money, and of course, I had to pay child support. But things changed when my daughter turned 12 years old. Once she turned 12, the courts would allow her to choose who she could live with. I told her early on, if she wants to live with me, <clears throat> I will welcome her with open arms. But under one condition, if she wanted to come live with me, no going back to live with her mother. A little after she turned 12 years old, she said she wanted to live with me. I told her, really think about it because there is no going back. But I was so happy she was thinking she wanted to live with me. A few weeks later, she said she was sure and she wanted to live with me. I could not have been happier. I asked if she wanted, wanted us to talk with her mother, and she said she wanted to tell her alone. Well, to say the least, that did not go over very well with Betty. Betty cried and was hysterical. Oh, F her. We had to rework the divorce papers, and now she would be paying me child support. There you go. She's not being hysterical over the daughter wanting to live with you. She's being hysterical because she has to, God forbid, give back to you some of the money she stole from you. And yes, I said stole. All I can say is until my daughter turned 18 years old and graduated high school, my ex made my life a living hell. Blaming me, getting my daughter to live with me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and she probably was an a-hole to your daughter as well. I've known mothers where at a certain age, the, child, the daughter wants to live with the father and the mother just... That's it. The daughter is the devil to her. And then would prefer the other kid if there's another kid or something like that. Screw her. First few years after the divorce, I didn't date very much. Well, who can blame you? I concentrate on my career, which is engineering. Fast-paced, but stressful. But I enjoy the changes and the, that the work offered. I also love to run, and every morning before work, I ran six miles. Wow, that's dedication. Good for you, sir. I just enjoy how I feel after a good run. About four years after the marriage, I met an absolutely beautiful woman in, in the bakery. Easily a nine or a ten. Uh-oh. We all know that means trouble. Nines and tens are hookup material. They are not relationship material. Especially nowadays. Six, sevens, and maybe eights. But you gotta keep, a, keep them on a tight leash, those eights our relationship material. Not nines and tens. Uh-uh. Bang them and leave. Uh, I jokingly said something sarcastic to her, and she turned to me and laughed. We talked for a little bit, and I got her phone number. We went out the following Saturday and started to date. Oh, Jesus. Her past profession was a TV model for commercials and a makeup artist. After a few months of dating, we became exclusive. Now, let's see how this goes. Then things changed and her real personality came out. Shocker. This woman was bat crap crazy jealous. At first, I put up with it. Smack. That just invites more bullshit, dude. But her jealousy just get, kept getting more and more severe. 
Here's the best example of her jealousy and what led me to end the relationship. Coming home from work one evening, I picked her up and we went to my house. I was changing my clothes when she picked me up and she picked up my underwear and I kid you not, she inspected them. I thought I was going to lose my mind, but I stayed relatively calm and told her to get the hell out and I never saw her again. This is why I tell you guys, nines and tens, bang them and leave. That's it. Period. There's going to be some people who say, SSF, that means you're not a real man. You can't handle nine or a ten. Why would I want to? Why would any sane guy want to go through that never-ending drama and shit tests and crazy that the nines and tens guarantee are going to bring into your life? You want a relationship? Have a six or a seven or even an eight. But the eight, you're going to have to, you know... Keep them on a tight leash and let them know who's the boss. But it's not. But the nines and tens are a whole new level. And if you don't believe me, go ahead. And you'll be writing me a story in a few months about how I was right. Uh, this leads up to my main story. Without getting into much detail, I met Carmen, Carmen at a friend's party when I was 48 years old. She was 40 and she had a 10-year-old daughter. Single MOM, huh? Smack! Have you not been through enough suffering? She is a beautiful Latina woman. Uh-oh. Yes, they are beautiful, and I'm surrounded by them. I'm going to need you guys to keep me from turning to the dark side, or turning to the dumb side, but I wouldn't worry too much. With a tan skin, 5'5", five five, 125, curves, and 36D on top. Yeah, I can see how you got roped in. She's got a body like I like. I was definitely attracted to her, and she was very outgoing personality. We talked for most of the night. We dated for two years and married. Smack! Two years? Didn't you learn your lesson the first time when you got married so young? And your ex took you to the cleaners? You need to go through more hell, my friend? I know you know this now. And I'm not doing this to be an a-hole, but I gotta make my point. You should have waited five years to know her at least. And waited maybe till that kid was 18 and a legal adult. <clears throat> Guess how this turns out, guys. Can you, can you all place your bets? She had her own career, and at the time of our marriage, and I had risen to the highest level of my profession. I was making good money, six figures, and she was making good money as well. Okay, at least she was making her own fucking money. I forgot to mention before that we got married, I had a few conditions that I would not tolerate. Number one, jealousy. Number two, cheating. And number three, lying. Well, there could be a few other things you added to that list, but okay, those three are, are important. Now, does anybody think that she's going to abide by these rules and terms and conditions, you know, long term? While dating, and when we were married, I had talked about wanting to live a quieter life in the country. <laughs> Sounds good to me, dude. I was, starting to be, I was uh, starting to become tired of the rat race in the big city and the stress it brings to living in a large city. I bring this up because it will be very important later in our marriage. We had a good and close marriage for the most part. SCX was never a problem. Six or seven times a week, and it was the best SCX I ever had. Dude, your first marriage, three to four times a week for 18 years? I was unbelievably impressed, and now the six or seven times... I know these Latina women... Well, I don't need to elaborate. You guys know what I'm talking about, the day Latina women, but still, you hound. You must be packing 10 inches down there. I don't know what. We both like to exercise and stay in good shape. That's a good thing. I stopped running because the knees were bothering me, so I started walking instead on weekends, and we would take longer walks together. The, the walks were a nice time to talk about our week and anything on our mind. The, the walk seemed to keep us connected with one another. We always had a good vacation every year. Every other year, we would go to visit her family in South America, and the other years go overseas, cruise, or a nice place in the States. Okay, this all sounds pretty darn good. Now, you're going to start to see, guys, when uh, he starts slipping up, letting her get away with BS. And I tell you all the time, you must check your girl. Your girl, even if she's the coolest chick in the world, is going to have a bad day. We all have bad days. And take out her shit on you or someone she cares about. And if you allow her to do that and not call her on it or whatever good reason to call her upon being an a-hole, she's going to lose respect for you. And there'll be more BS and more shit tests. And then you all understand what I'm talking about. 
Uh, we lived in a nice upper middle class neighborhood. The house wasn't huge, but very comfortable for a family of three. My daughter was out of the house at this time, had graduated college, had a career, and lived in a different city in our state. In my marriage with Carmen, I was sometimes a pussy and other times RP. Well, you, can, you can't be both. Okay, because, yeah, you, you, you can play down the law sometimes and be a good leader and all that, but if you start acting weak, that makes them confused, and they start testing you, and bullshit happens, and you have to either be one, either one or the other. Otherwise, it's going to be a problem. In our relationship, she never seemed satisfied with what we had. Aha. Uh-huh. Always saying she wanted a bigger house, travel even more, comparing us to some of her friends. I would say at that point then, well, then you're, we can, we can, you can certainly go find yourself another husband. Because I love our house. It's perfect for us. And we travel enough and blah, blah, blah. That's what you should have said. <gasps> Ay, caramba. Adios mio. Sometimes I would check her by telling her if she didn't like that we had, I would then point to the door and tell her you could always leave and find a richer man to provide for you. Aha, good for you. She wouldn't say anything and just give me, give me a look and shut up what I tell you. I didn't give a shit. I didn't like being told I'm not good enough. We also split the house duties. I would take care of the yard, cars, home maintenance, and bills. Carmen would take care of the household duties. Works for me. I probably need to bring this up now because this is very important. I've always had a love for landscape photography and hiking. It is my favorite hobby slash activity. I love being in the outdoors away from civilization. Amen, dude. Carmen never had a problem with me going out and doing my photography. She always she was always welcome to come along, but rarely went with me. She preferred to stay home and watch TV or sleep. Yeah, that's productive. I would sometimes get up in the middle of the night and go photograph the stars in the Milky Way, or get up at 4 a.m. to drive two hours to be at the beach to, ph- to photograph the sunrise. I would always text her when I got to my destination and text her when I was leaving. That's considerate. That's fine. She always trusted me, and if she ever questioned if I was actually out doing photography, my my images were always time-stamped. She never questioned me directly. Carmen noticed a difference in me about seven years into our marriage. For the most part, I was happy with our relationship. I was talking to Carmen and told her I was tired of my job and the rat race. I was tired of the stress, long hours, the commute, and rush hour traffic, and I wanted some type of change. Well, at this point, you're probably 55 years old since you said you got married to her at 48. So, there are a lot of guys in their 50s that are thinking the same thing. Hell, there are guys in their 40s thinking the same thing. Uh, Once you get older, time is the most important commodity. I told this, and she really didn't care. Uh, A couple more more years went by. I'm still unhappy. I remember looking out my office window and seeing life going by. At that point, I was 58 years old. I would occasionally bring up getting out of the city and moving to a small town or something. Really didn't have a plan at that point. Just knew deep down it was time for a change. That's what happened to my dad. But my dad, guys, I mentioned before, my dad was 22 years older than my mom. And uh, he had a first marriage. And I, I was the firstborn of marriage number two to my mom. Mom and him. And so when he retired as a doctor, 65 years old, he wanted to get the hell out of Los Angeles. Who can blame him? This is 1987. And we moved to a small, middle-of-the-nowhere, bumblefuck farm country, Pennsylvania, where Dad got away from it all, and I hated it. Now I appreciate it because it's quiet. But anyhow, I, and I get why he did Driving to the work in the hospital in Los Angeles traffic for 20 years, that will certainly do something to, to you. And that was back then when there's less people there. So I get it, bro. I just knew deep down it was time for a change. I was ready to leave my career, and Carmen's career would allow her to work r- remotely, but she uh, to keep the uh, status quo. She would just keep encouraging me to stay at my company, even though she knew I wasn't happy about. It. Yeah, because to keep bringing in that paycheck. Because this is missed, the house is big and isn't big enough. We need to do more vacations and wants to keep up with the Joneses. At the same time, she stopped doing the household duties and stopped exercising, walking with me on the weekends. Uh uh-uh. uh, uh uh. Oh no 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 no. We have a pact here. I take care of the lawn, the car, maintenance, all that stuff like that. You're gonna the dishes, the vacuuming, and cooking. And oh no no, there's no stopping exercising. I I didn't marry a fat chick. Uh uh-uh. uh. These 
I think he said she's five foot two. Five foot two can turn very big real quick if you're not if left unchecked. Oh no no no! Get your ass off the TV. No more reruns of Law and Order. We're going for a walk, and you're gonna eat healthy. You gotta lay down the law with that shit, man. <clears throat> I couldn't handle the house being dirty and things not being done around the house. This is the part I was a pussy on. I didn't call her out on not living up to her end of the agreement. Smack. Yeah. She's getting lazy. She's getting too certain in the relationship that you aren't going anywhere. She's probably, other times when you didn't check her on things, she, now she's testing you. What else can I get away with? You know? Here's my experience with Latina gals. And then you guys that have experience can tell me this. They, the second a guy act, act, start acting weak, look out. They do not tolerate weakness for a second. And the, and the, and the second, not the minute, the second you start acting weak, well, you all know that we're ever involved with or date a Latina girl. And you Latina girls are watching. There's got to be one watching me here. You know what I'm talking about. I just started cleaning the house, doing my laundry, not hers, and cooking for myself. Smack! No, you should have had her back. You got lit on the law, ma'am. It's not fair that you're doing everything. I'd come out every day and either do yard work or clean part of the house. My new routine was work 11 hours and come home and take care of the house and cook and maybe get two hours to decompress before going to bed. Also, since Carmen stopped exercising and gained at least 40 pounds. 40 pounds on that 5 foot 2 frame looks very large. Not, not very, very I mean, she She's gotten to become a big girl. And I'm sure she already had a big booty to begin with. Now this th thing's like this wide. No. Uh-uh. Another annoying thing Carmen started to do was to ask me to do something for her, and if I said no, and asked ask her that she needed to do it, she'd get mad at me and call me names in Spanish and say I'm not supporting her. Uh, like, well, then there's the door. Goodbye. See, the more weak you, you see this guy's, he's not doing all the work in the house and acting weak and letting her s s screw around, and now she's pulling more BS. She wants you to be a man and take charge and put her in her place. She wants you to be the guy that you were when you first got together because you were fresh from a marriage and dating a nutcase and you were not taking any crap then. But over time, they slowly she slowly wore you down. To keep peace sometimes, I would just do what she asked and tired to deal with the drama. Bad move, ma'am. An example of how ridiculous some of her requests to help with, Carmen came home one day from work. I was sitting in a chair relaxing. She walked over to me and said her daughter had changed the radio station in her car yesterday while they were out shopping. This is no joke. She asked me if I would change the radio station back to her channel since she did not know how. Bitch, turn on the car. And you go to the fucking knob. And you twist it to 107.9 or whatever station you like. And you're done. No, I'm not getting off the couch to go fucking shit test. What else can I make this guy do? I had this blank stare on my face. Now I have two options. Tell her to do it herself. And if I did that, she'd make my evening a living hell and tell me I'm not supporting her. Well, sadly, I got up, went to the garage and changed the station in her car just to have peace. Smack. That's not going to bring you peace. Now she's going to have less respect for you and pour, pull more, more bullshit. Let her throw a tantrum. Let her go off in Espanol. I don't care. You're not getting off the fucking couch. This is a lot of husbands do. They appease and they, they figure she's going to get mad at me. And it's going to be worse. So then I'll just do what she wants. That's blue pill shit. That's pussy behavior. You're not that way, man. You know, there's, a, there's a strong guy in there deep down. I know it. He says, too tired for bullshit. Another thing was that was happening every time her daughter and Carmen were in the same room, they would talk in Spanish. I sat Carmen down several times to ask her and her daughter to speak English when I'm in the room where I know what's going on. That's the problem. You were asking. You don't ask. She said, okay, but they kept speaking in Spanish. Duh. There's no consequences for her. I know a little Espanol, but when these two are talking, it's like the speed of sound. There is no way I can pick up on what they're saying. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, it's going to take me a long time to learn that language down here. Y'all talk so fast. Then again, we talk fast too. Things are starting to come to a head. I felt disrespected in my own house. 
My wife had lost her figure, was taking me for granted, and I was ready to, and, I, and I was ready to get out of the city. I lost most of my affection for her. Our SX was now once a week at best because I was not happy with her behavior or her looks. To be completely honest, I wasn't happy with my life in general. Just tired of the rat race, it was hard for me to get motivated to have SCX with her. Well, if she if, if she went from having that Latina booty that was like this to being like this, and you came to see my goddamn hands here, guys, yeah, that might, you know, dissuade me from, you know, the loving. Remember how he said in the beginning, six to seven times a week, and now it's barely once a week, and he has no motivation because, you know, she let herself go? She would try to initiate the SCX with me several times a week, but I would usually give an excuse. Okay, okay, so it sounds like it was once a week only because you... Like, oh, God, I have to do my duty as a husband here, but her ass is the size of a freaking Mack truck. But she still wanted it. I don't know if anyone can understand this, but I love Carmen, but I didn't like her at that point. For me to have SCX, I need to feel a connection, and I just don't have that connection. I never had a hookup. I've always had had to have feelings for a woman to have SCX that is just me. From doing research online, I had started researching working seasonal jobs in national parks. There's a big need for work at these parks. The people that work in the parks are either college students or retired or semi-retired seniors. Yeah, that's my observation. They're young or much older and they just hop around from park from year to year. They, I've talked to some of them that work in Yosemite, uh, Yellowstone, Glacier National Park. I've been to a lot of national parks. I love them. And it's always the same story. They just hop around you know, they might for a different season. That could be perfect for you. At the national parks, employees lived in dorms or RVs. I love this idea of getting an RV and going to work at a different national park each summer and having the national park your backyard to play in. My plan for the winter was to head to southern Arizona and either work part-time or not at all. My parents and brother live in Arizona, and this would give us time to see them more. We live on what we earned and not use any of our retirement funds for living for the living expenses. I want a more minimalist lifestyle, no house, less stuff, no traffic, no noise, open space, and peaceful, less 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 things, less stress. Bro, there's a lot of guys just like you that are thinking the same thing right now here in this. Problem is your wife is bit all about the big house, toys, vacations, that type of thing. You guys are not compatible. Maybe you were compatible at, at, at 48 years old in that stage of your life. You sure as hell ain't compatible now. Particularly how she's been showing you so much disrespect for so long. And, you know, she's ballooned up. Uh, this is a big lifestyle change, but every fiber of my body was telling me I needed to change. Listen to your gut. Your marriage is miserable. What the hell are you sticking around for? And you ain't getting any younger. About the same time, the COVID lockdowns were beginning. I was getting close to turning 60 years old and didn't want to lose any more of my youth and life to the rat race. I was still very active in hiking and exercising, and before I got too old to enjoy the activities I love, I wanted, I, that I love, I wanted to live. You don't know what the next day will bring, so you better enjoy every day you have. Yeah, a lot of people as they get older start thinking like that. I'm not at that point yet, at four, almost 46, a couple of weeks of turning 46. But I guarantee I'll be thinking that probably when I get to my 50s. The COVID lockdowns hit my company. My company decided to close the office I was working at and wanted me to work out of the main office, which was a 90-minute drive each way and paid $12 tolls each way. I said, no thanks, and just asked them to lay me off where I could collect unemployment. This gave me the opportunity to get out of the rat race and enjoy life before I got too old to enjoy it. While I stayed home, I researched for nine months how to live on the road and live a minimalist lifestyle. I researched what kind of RV I would need. That took a while, and finally decided the best for me was a travel trailer. This is awesome, man. This is just one little problem. You have a wife. Uh, during this time, I tried talking to Carmen about this lifestyle. She would not listen to me while I was talking. Of course she wasn't listening. She doesn't give a shit. She has no respect for you. Uh, she kept looking at her phone. I would call her out on it and demand she pay attention to me. She'd look at me and say, fine, but I could tell what I was saying was going in one ear and out the other. I tried several times, and the last time was early January 2021. At the time, I still wanted her to come with me on the adventure. <laughs> what, to make you more miserable? Ruin your amazing adventure and li new life? Bro, it's been over for a long time. To be honest, I didn't know how long the adventure would last and where it would take us, but I knew I wanted a, li a life change. 
She knew from the day we met, I didn't want to live in a large city all my life. I told the details about living in a, in a travel trailer and working in national parks. Yeah, good luck with that, amigo. We talked, or I talked, for an hour or so. She really didn't ask me any questions because she wanted the status quo. Carmen bought, uh, brought up her daughter and said, what about her? I said she's in college, and in the summer, she could work at some of the national parks at, as us. They have dormers for the college kids, and she'd be able to spend time with us. But she did But she did like the idea. After that conversation just went on deaf ears, she told me in a very stern voice, if you want to do this, you will have to go alone. I, did look, I looked directly in her eyes and said, well, I guess I'm going alone because I'm going with or without you. And there you go. Now, here's the thing. I try to be fair here. Even though Carmen is behaving like an a-hole on multiple fronts, you didn't check her when she needed to be checked. You didn't lay down the law. You stopped being the guy, that clearly, the more laying, laying down the law tough guy initially when you got together. Because otherwise, she would have put on 40 pounds the second you said, I do, and you get the point. Because it said for years, things were going well in your marriage. You stop being that guy, and that's when all the bullshit started. But she's an a-hole, too, for how she's acting. Don't get me wrong. Here's the other thing. This is your dream. It's not hers. And so if she wants to not live in the national parks and not work in the national parks, that, that that's her right. I, I'm going to be honest here, you know. But since your marriage has already turned to dog crap, and she treats you like crap, and just you're unhappy, you got reason to go. There's no reason to stay anymore with her. She doesn't love you, dude. Okay, I know it's hard to hear. You know, her action it's all about actions, and her actions communicate that completely. Maybe there was a time and place that she did in her own female way, because women don't love the same way guys do, let's be honest here. But that's gone bye-bye. You gotta depart and take care of you. <clears throat> From that point forward, I made plans to go alone and to leave as soon as I can. Before, I would have waited until my daughter was able to go back to college once the university reopened from COVID. That month, I sold my car and bought a pickup truck to tow the trailer. I'd done my research on travel trailers and had decided on one that will fill, me, fill my needs. I bought the trailer in February in a city about four hours away. I told my wife I bought the trailer and I was going to the city to look at it before I gave the dealership the money. She's probably thinking, nah, he doesn't have the balls to do this. Well, he's about to prove her wrong. Before I went to the city, I'd already negotiated the price. The trailer was exactly what I wanted, and I finalized the deal. I didn't take the trailer home as I had no place to store it. The dealership said I could keep it there until I wanted to pick it up. I wasn't hiding anything from my wife. While at the dealership, Carmen asked me to send her some photos of the trailer. I guess she really didn't believe that I was going to go through with this or didn't believe I was at the dealership. And I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. Your actions, by putting up with her bullshit all these years, made her think, no, he's not going anywhere. He's bluffing. Well, surprise, surprise, Miss Carmen. I was also buying a lot of things from Amazon for the trailer. I had all the packages stacked up in the garage in plain sight. While this was going on, in the last few months, Carmen started to get jealous. The reason for her jealousy was twofold. One, the lack of SCX on my part, and two, she was rarely walking with me, meaning maybe once every few weeks. On one of my walks, I saw many of the same people walking. I usually said hello and kept walking, and on occasion would stop and have a small talk for a minute or so and then continue my walk. <clears throat> one of the people I saw was a lady that was walking alone. She was probably was in her late 30s, okay looking at best. On one of these rare occasions, my wife decided to walk with me. We ran across this lady and I said, hello, how are you, and kept walking. Can anybody figure out what's going to happen next? My, my wife was pissed and started yelling at me, asking who she is, what's her name, and I told her calmly, I don't know anything about her. I just said hello to her like everyone else that I see on my walk. She kept on saying that I wanted to have SCX with this woman. I just shook my head and laughed and said, no, the last thing I wanted was another woman. Carmen would not stop bringing up this woman. It seemed every, every week she would accuse me of an affair. I just wouldn't engage her on it, and I usually would just walk away. Very good, bro. Very good. She wanted the drama. She wanted to fight. I can totally picture this scene going on here, man. <laughs> but remember, you said you weren't having the SCX with her. Why? Because she's been just an asshole to live with and showing you disrespect. So you didn't have that bond with her, which she says is important. And two, she ballooned up 40 pounds 
and her ass again was probably the size of a bus, so it's just like, no. In February, I'd gotten a job at a national park in the Northwest in a campground store starting April 1st to the middle of October. Awesome, man. You're making it happen. Good for you. This, however, I didn't tell my wife. At this point, the less she knew, the better. I was mentally through with our marriage and was planning to leave at the end of March. So I'm going to stop here for a second, gentlemen. A little intermission here. You can pause this and go take a leak or whatever and come back. What he's doing here, he's done. He's making his preparations. And he didn't exactly hide this from her, right? You all heard this. This is what I want to do. He's taking charge of his life. But at this point then, he's done. At this point, he's got a new job, planning his new life. What do women do when they're done with their men? They make plans for, they usually line up another guy. They, they get everything lined up before they take off. For once, a guy's doing what they do. And I'm old about you, this guy was just torn apart. Or how dare he and blah, 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 even though this is what they do. Okay, back to the story. You all can come back from the bathroom now. The update, my intermission's done. Uh, I was going to pick up my trailer and head to the National Park. I was going to sit down and talk with her the rest of the day. I was going to leave. I was going to leave her the house, the cars, a nice lump sum of cash. I would give her the power of attorney for the house and the cars where she wanted to, and she would sell them and put them in her name if she could. She also had the money from the sale of her condo. Oh, my God. Here we are again. You're, you got married a second time, and you're losing all this again. But for you, I, I'm sure that you just want to get away. That's it. You'll have enough to take care of you. You want to get away and be free and live the life you want to live. That's still a hefty price. For me, I had the truck, the trailer, and my retirement fund. This would be more than fair split of assets. Divorce in my state is no fault and it's 50-50 split of assets from the time of marriage. So most everything was before we were married except the cars. However, my plans changed abruptly in early March. In the morning, Carmen was getting ready for work, and out of the blue, once again, she stirred up about me having an affair with that woman. <sighs> drama, drama, drama. I think she even called me every name in the book in English and in Spanish. She went on for 10 to 15 minutes just verbally attacking me, but I would not engage in her rent. Um, anybody else pick up that this is abuse? Right? And I know I probably can't say that word here on YouTube. I hope they don't flag it or something, but you get my point. That's what this is. <clears throat> she started to walk to the garage to leave, still yelling at me, and I finally responded to her rent and said to her, this is how you're going to treat me, and she never turned around or responded. She just slammed the door and left. Fucking drama queen. That was the last thing I said to her in person. I stood there for a minute and told myself at that moment that I'm leaving today. I was pissed for a little bit, but once I started to organize my packing, packing, the peace came over me. It took me about 2 o'clock in the afternoon to be ready to leave. i have written a four-page letter to Carmen and told her, I'm sorry, it ended this way. It's ending because of her actions, not because you're some villain. Short story, I said, you do not respect me. You take me for granted. I will not tolerate jealousy, as I have been saying for years. I need to get out of the rat race. I left her the titles to the cars and power of attorney and a list of our utility companies and contact numbers, the AC repair guy, plumber, and others. Before I left, I had all my banking separated into new accounts. Good. <clears throat> as much as I was done with the marriage, I love Carmen still. I just had not liked her for a long time. In the letter, I still stated that she'd be welcome to join me at any time, but I knew that would not happen. Smack! You're divorcing her. There's no more relationship with Carmen. Why the fuck would you want to be have anything to do with her at this point? What will happen is she'll have a meltdown because she actually will see that you're serious and say and do whatever it takes, the waterworks, of course, to get you back, and you take her back, and your whole dream of freedom and the life you want to live will be destroyed. No, I don't want to hear this, you're welcome to come join me, Yosemite nonsense. They wouldn't like her there because she'd be ruining the peace of all the campers and people there that want to get away from the noise because her noisy ass, we, the, the, the fucking bears would be coming out and eating her alive in the tent. Well, that actually it would be, that'd be nice. <clears throat> I was still in love with Carmen and know that she loved me. Smack! Newsflash, dude. No, she does not. Her actions prove that. I know you want to believe that and I don't mean to... No. You need to know this. 
That's what you're here for. I'm going to call it as it is. She does not love you, okay? I wish it was. I was wrong, but no, her actions communicate otherwise. The hardest thing I ever did in my life was driving out of the driveway. I knew there was no going back. Now, there was a deep sadness that is tough to describe. I was walking away from someone that loved me. No, she doesn't. But I knew I had to do this before age got the better of me. I told my wife this, was, this on many of our discussions that I don't know when your time is up and you need to live your life to the fullest. What I can do at 60 years old, I might not be able to do at 65. And so on. I kept my phone off, but before I left, I told my parents and daughter my plans. Both my parents and daughter were supportive of my decision. Good. Thank God that they weren't saying, you bastard, how dare you abandon her, blah, blah, blah. Good. <clears throat> I was about 30 minutes from the city. I was going to pick up my trailer when I decided to turn my phone on. Oh, God. Big mistake, he says. My mom and daughter had called me several times, as well as a million calls from Carmen. Ah, somebody now knows you're serious. I called my mom, and she said Carmen is beside herself, crying and hysterical, and my daughter said the same. Translation, will you please talk to her, because we don't want her fucking calling us up day and night. I decided to call Carmen. Smack! Have you not suffered enough, my friend? She was crying and begging me to come home. I said no. It was hard hearing her cry and begging me to come home. I can't describe the pain. I'd be laughing my ass off. I'd be pushing the mute button. I didn't want to hurt her, but sometimes you need to do what's best for you. Well, she's had no problem hurting you all these years. And trust me, she knew she was hurting you. I told her this is something I must do. And you refused to come with me. I'm sorry for not telling you face to face. I was leaving, but your behavior this morning broke the camel's back. We talked a little longer, and to be quite honest, I don't remember the rest of the conversation. Yeah, because she probably went from zero to Tuscan Raider in two seconds. <laughs> and crying and all that, the waterworks. Bro, she didn't love you, period. End of story. You may have a lot of fun to get initially, but the way she treated you. There should be no feeling bad here, given how she's been treating you all this time, and how she's been acting like a nut job. You have every right to leave and not feel bad. You can mourn the, the, the loss of what you once thought she was. You can mourn the years that you spent with her to have things turn out the way it is. You can mourn the loss of half your assets. I'd be, cry I'd be crying about that. Not her crazy ass. But no, it's over. You should be talking to her. Unless you have to. That night in the hotel, she called me again, begging me to come home, but I refused. The next day, I picked up the trailer, drove close to my daughter's home, and spent the time with her before leaving for the national park. In the coming days, I talked with Carmen many times. Why? The more you talk to her, the more you're likely to screw up and feel bad. She was still begging me to come home, but I wasn't having nothing of it. She told me I was very brave to take on this new life alone. Bullshit. She's twisting it around now, trying to butter, butter you. You're not a piece of bread. Stop buttering me. I, I reminded her that she told me to go alone. I guess she didn't believe how important this was to me and thought I would never leave. There you go, right there. She never thought you'd leave. You had been too nice, put up too much of her crap for too long that she thought there was her perception of you as you're a weak bitch, you're never going anywhere. And I still stand by the fact that she wanted a strong man to lay down the law, put her in her place, and be the guy that you were initially, but that ship sailed and just and she her true colors came out. But still. I know I hurt Carmen dearly, and I'm truly sorry. Smack! Stop being sorry. Look what she did to you. To this day, I still feel bad for how things ended. Smack! Stop feeling bad. That's your problem. I still wish she would have embraced this adventure. I know she would have been happy. No, she wouldn't have. There'd be no making her happy. Clearly. It's been almost three years since I have left my wife to live my minimalist life, working national parks in the summer and staying warm in the winter in southern Arizona. There is no way to describe my happiness. I just love it. There you go. You are living your life on your terms. Doing what you want, when you want, with whoever you want, where, whatever. On your terms. And there's no karma in there to yell at you and scream at you and make you feel like less than a man. Right? Your terms. You earned this, dude. Good for you. I know it was hard. I'm proud of you. I just love this. This lifestyle has given me such peace and freedom, and I cannot imagine ever living in a large city again. My cost of living is barely anything, less than 1500 a month. 
In the back of my head, if I do not look like where I am, I can always just hitch my trail up and go somewhere else. The, that is freedom. Exactly. Fortunately, I've enjoyed everywhere I have been, especially the people I've met and friends I've made on my journey. The places I've seen and my adventures have been amazing. I wish I would have done this sooner. Everybody says that. Bro, you could write a book about this. You get the miserable marriages, and finally you do what you want to do, and then archive your adventures in all the national parks and the interesting people that you met, and blah, blah, blah. That'd be a great movie. Seriously. I have bought undeveloped property on the foothills of a mountain range, and one day I will build a tiny home on it. I've learned you do not need material things to be happy, but for now, I'm not ready to stay, to stay put. My next adventure, I'm planning to live in Mexico for at least a year on the beach at of the Sea of Cortez. I have a friend that has lived there for over 20 years and says, I will love it. We will see. That's awesome. We will find out. Carmen and I still talk on a regular basis. Smack, smack, smack. Why? You're divorced now. Why? She wants to wear you down. You didn't mention about how much peace you're at and how much you love your life. Bring her back into it. It's going to turn to chaos. She did ask for a divorce soon after I left, and we did the divorce online. Yes, online. There was no arguments about property or money, and it was a very easy divorce. Well, thank God for that. Yeah, very easy, because you got half your shit. I flew to see her after the divorce because I owed her a face-to-face -face meeting because of the way I left. Dude, you didn't owe her shit. But if you had to do that for your own conscience, fine. I actually stayed at her house. We got along fine, no SEX. Well, that's good. And I can't... Why the hell did you stay at your old house? Your old house? Yeah, no SEX because I'm sure her, she still has that 40 pounds on her ass. No, we are not getting back together. We both want different things out of life, but we remain friends. Smack. Sure. Until you're a little bit older and realize... You know what? I can't always quite remember to take the medication I'm supposed to take or other things. And then you start thinking, maybe I'll just bring her with me, you know, because I could use, I'm lonely or something like that. It's a bad idea, man. You should have cut ties completely. Wish her well. She can find some other victim. SSM, you don't know her. Oh, yes, I do know her. You've told me enough. I've been around the block. I'm 46, for heaven's sake. I know what I'm fucking talking about here. She has told me she took me for granted and was disrespectful and sorry for that. She's sorry because you dumped her and you sh and you showed her the man that she wanted. Now you're acting like the man that she's attracted to. Nice to hear, but on occasion she still brings up that lady I saw walking in our neighborhood. She's still bringing up that woman. She is dead set to, to you're having an affair with her because you said hello to her. The last time she brought it up, I told this is the last time, and the answer is no, I did not. And if she brings it up again, I will never talk to her again. She has never brought it up again. I think Carmen still believes that the only way I would have left her is because of another woman. How wrong she is. Good God. Back to me. I will never get married again, and most likely will never be in a relationship or date. Not too many women out there are interested in a guy living my lifestyle, which is fine with me. I'm actually, I bet you there are women that like this lifestyle. You know, I've met some, I've talked to people down there, clearly 60 plus in these national parks, as I chat up everybody, because I like to know how people live and all. And there are women there that are older, and they like that lifestyle. I love living alone. I do what I want, when I want, and no compromising. I'm still very active, walking or hiking a minimum of six miles a day, and doing my photography. When I hike, mo hike most times, I go off trail and make my own trail. I like making my own adventures. There you go. Making your own trail, as every man wants to do and should do. I love my life, and when I talk to my family, friends, and even Carmen, they can hear the happiness in my voice. I wish I could describe the the, the way I enjoy it, that I have. He wrote this wrong. I wish I could describe how I have this enjoyment of life. What I hope people get out of my story is you only have one life to live, and you need to live your life and not someone else's life. At times, you must put yourself first. Amen. Long-ass story, guys. I'm glad you stuck with me on this. But anyhow, bro, that, that's a fantastic story, and I'm glad you are where you are now, and I know it wasn't easy, but my only problem is, obviously, is that you're still talking to your ex, and I do not believe for a second that she loved you, because you don't treat someone like that that you truly love. I think when you first got together in her own female way, 
she had affection and loved you, but you obviously behaved differently in the beginning. And over time, as it happens to a lot of guys, let's be honest here, marriages, slowly over time, they stop being the guy that they were. And they wake up one day and they're totally pee whipped. And they're like, what the hell happened? You know, that's what happened to you. And yeah, you made mistakes, obviously. You're not, you're not blameless in that. But still, she was a fucking asshole to you. Disrespect and all that. And then her daughter was being disrespectful to you because she was picking up what, what mom was doing. And then you have a right to leave. And you made it clear you're out of there. And the only reason she's crying and begging and pleading and treating you now the way she is in terms, with the exception of bringing up that woman on the walk, is because you showed balls again. You, you were that take charge guy doing what you wanted and not taking her crap and you left her ass. Then she had attraction for you because you acted like a fucking man. You know, so this is why you're talking. And I will to bet you that, yeah, she'd jump, in the, she, she'd jump right into in, the sack with you right now and fuck your brains out because she's probably attracted to the guy you're being now. But the likelihood is you get go right back to being what you were before and it'd be, your life would be a living hell. And I don't want the people at the national parks to hear her crazy ass yelling at you or whatever because they deserve their peace in the national parks as, as anybody does. So, bro... I would not be talking to her, but I'm sure I can't change your mind. So just if you're going to keep talking to her, be careful. Be careful. She's going to wear you down. And one next thing you know, she's coming to visit you over at the Grand Canyon or some other place. And God damn it, if I'm visiting a national park and I see some Latina woman yelling at her guy, I'm going to go see if it's you. Because And if it is you, I'm going to slap you right there. Throw your ass into the Grand Canyon for bringing her along to a, piece of, a, a place of peace. And ruining my time in the Grand Canyon because she's yelling at you. So I would not bring her along to anything, but be careful. Very careful. And I hope you continue living your life the way you want and have a great time. I really wish you well. So there you go, guys. This goes to show you, you got to do what's best for you and live your own life. With, obviously, within reason. You want to you wanna hurt people that are good to you. I'm going to make that clear. Don't hurt those that love you and treat you well. But the ones that treat you like crap, you know. So we learned a lot in this story about rushing into marriage and multiple marriages and what happens you act like act weak and try to appease and all that and how the life of a single guy on his own making up his own terms doing what he wants is bliss all right guys that is it for today be sure to comment down below let me know what you think about this let this guy know what you think let him know what you think about talking to his ex-wife please lay it on he needs to hear this and be sure to like the video share with your friends and subscribe i'll catch you next time